pick is an artist from Cambodia. He, his family moved to the US where he grew up and where he studied art, during which time he thought of himself largely as a painter. Two years after graduating from Chicago, I felt that uh, my work has to do with the memory of childhood in Cambodia. And so I just felt that I needed to go back to Cambodia um, to find out what that's about. He was trying to figure out how his contemporary art practice that he had acquired you know, and absorbed, all, all the cultural and, and aesthetic uh, information that he had, how that would integrate into Cambodian contemporary practice. And I think for him, he found painting being a slightly uh, incongruous sort of medium to be working with within Cambodian society. I felt that uh, uh, there was always something lacking uh, to me in painting. It seems like uh, this uh, painting as an as an activity, it's a bit of a, an abstract activity. You are basically creating something on a, a flat surface that wasn't there before, unlike photography or some other medium. I just happened to love painting as a medium, um, but I didn't know what I was doing you know, with painting. So kind of an accident, I started making sculpture out of rattan. The rattan is, is a very common material in Cambodia. It is something you would use to make ordinary objects, you know, baskets, uh, tools, fish traps. And so it's something he was quite familiar with as well. I think he found a lot of pleasure in the physical manipulation of the bamboo, being a very rigid plant, but at the same time malleable if one was patient with it, if one was willing to engage with it, to try to understand what it could do. It felt right. The activity of making a sculpture feel more real to me than painting did. It feels like um, there's a progression. You start here and then you end up here. And during that time span, there's a certain emotion that was involved in terms of making uh, uh, this, this object. You're in another world, you're in another space, and uh, the only thing that you worry about is food and sleep. He started out working on a lot of biomorphic sort of forms, uh, more organic forms. And I started making a pair of lungs because I felt that um, these body organs were sort of uh, anonymous, kind of like me as a person, as an anonymous, anonymous person in a society. So it didn't have the expression, of eyes, it didn't have mouth, it didn't have tooth. You can't read in, any, anything into it other than what it is. So I was having fun with just making form out of these kind of symbols, you know, the body organs as a kind of symbol for something. And there is the learning process of what that sculpture wants to be. I, I, I think I don't lose track or lose the sense of where it starts, but the sculpture becomes something else. And then you move on. It started to move outside the body into nature, into uh, abstraction. And people always say that the Cambodian art has never modernized. It didn't get modern. But in fact, if you're talking about abstraction, this is a kind of modern thinking, isn't it? You know, and so I saw an exhibition at a place called Rayum, which is a research center. When I saw this uh, exhibition on ornamentation, I realized, oh, there's a lot of abstraction that's already there. Our forefathers have discovered this or have concluded that. But we have a kind of disconnect in terms of, you know, the, the modern history and the old history. We never have abstract expressionism because we, we never had a chance because we had war. That doesn't necessarily mean that the absence of perhaps particular types of movements in relation to Western art history represents some kind of ignorance or some portion that's missing in South and Southeast Asian art history, I think. It's kind of like a window, a, a way to organize the aesthetics and to talk about it, but it's not the only way. So I, I would not actually really read um, Sopip's work in terms of any kind of modernist movement and certainly some of his later works would easily fit into something like that. For example, the works that he produced last year, which were shown at Documenta, they are these grid forms, which is a grid that he has been using all along. The Morning Glory was the last work before abstract, these abstract grid paintings, so-called paintings. I mean, I actually apply more like I attacked it with paint. Um, the new work that I do now have dirt and wax and uh, resin and uh, burlap and plastic and still under my sort of uh, restraint way of working but it's more added on but it's also abstraction which is also reductive in a sense that you take out the subject matter and uh, it's, an, um, it's sort of a revisiting uh, painting again um, and also relating to other painters that I have loved and you know inspired me you know before.